Today on an all new Dr. Phil. My ex-wife accused us of murdering Carly and getting rid of the body. Their daughter went missing. You believe they know more than they're saying? I received a call from Zach who said Carly's gone. What did you think gone meant? Dead. Could an audio recording? She goes, I'm just really scared. Hold the answers? Melissa says that she will allow me to hear the last recording of Carly. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Yesterday, we began to delve into the mystery of 16-year-old Carly Gousset, who went missing from her stepmother, Melissa, and father Zach's home. They say they have done everything they can to try to locate their daughter, who disappeared in the early morning hours of October 13th, 2018. Today, we'll meet Carly's biological mother, Lindsay, who says she has suspicions about what really happened to her daughter and wants Melissa and Zach to finally tell the truth about the night she vanished into thin air. Here's what happened yesterday. It's been three months since 16-year-old Carly disappeared. Carly was discovered missing from her home at about 6.15 in the morning. Carly was last seen walking towards Highway 6. Carly Gousset's picture is taped to window after window in the town of Bishop, California. Authorities say she doesn't have her cell phone, maybe disoriented. I'm pretty confident that she walked away from the house that morning because people saw her. Her father, Zach, and stepmother, Melissa, were with her the night she disappeared and are adamant that they have no idea what happened to her or where she could be. The night Carly went missing, she lied and said that she was going to a football game. She called me scared, paranoid. When she got into the car, her face was pale, her eyes were dilated. I only know that she smoked marijuana because she admitted that to me. At 3 a.m., I woke up and noticed my wife was with her. Carly was wide awake. I just figured it was the drugs. I woke up at 7.15 and she was gone. I full-heartedly believe that Carly is alive. Your theory is that whatever she smoked was laced with something else? I feel that it was laced with something laced else. Laced or, just or because of the way she something exactly. gave her something. Did she eat anything at that point? I made her a salad. And she was saying strange things about the lettuce, right? She was eating and she was just like, I'm eating the devil's lettuce. Did y'all think about taking her to the ER at this point? You should have. I Every second of every day, I wish I had. At one point, you filmed her, right? No, it's all audio. All audio. I wanted to hear that tape, but you didn't let us hear that tape. Did anybody ask us? I don't even no. think anybody Oh, we asked. Ask. If she left, it was between 5.30 and 7.15. The first witness says that he saw her at 6.30. We wanted to talk to him as well, and y'all wouldn't give us his information. Why? No. We asked for his address so we could talk to him. Honestly, I'm not going to bring them in unless they say they want to. Y'all wouldn't even give us your address. You don't trust us or what? It's still an ongoing investigation. The police have never considered y'all suspects. No. Melissa and Zach say they have no idea where Carly is, yet her mother, Lindsay, continues to question their involvement in her disappearance. Lindsay was speculating that my wife, Melissa, had something to do with her disappearance. Maybe she killed her and got rid of the body. I said, are you kidding me? That I would hurt her? Lindsay, she's been watching backstage because Melissa and Zach have said that they don't want to see or talk to her. Is that true? Y'all don't want to be with her? No. No, not after the uh, speculations and accusations she's put, especially against my wife and, and us. I think everybody should put their personal agendas aside yeah. and focus one thing, and that's yeah. to get on Carly. And I'm not here for the drama for that. I'm not here for that. I'm here to show Carly's face to your viewers. Do you think she's alive? I pray she is. We have to to make it through the day. Uh, Lindsay says that she does think Melissa and Zach are hiding something about what happened to Carly. What, I have no idea. But maybe they know where she is now or something. I don't know, but here's what she says on tape. 
When I got the call from Zach at 9.35 a.m., I heard the words that Carly was gone, and my heart sunk to my stomach. Where is she? Who was she with? What time did she get home? You know, Zach, Carly went missing from your guys' residence. His response was, well, at least you have a alibi. You're in another state. You guys are literally labeled suspects because you're the last ones to have seen her. My suspicions about Zach and Melissa didn't come up until after I arrived at their residence and heard the audio that they had recorded of Carly. Carly seemed really confused, concerned about her health. You can hear her asking, are you going to call 911? I heard her call out for mom. I am just really scared. I did ask Zach and Melissa why they did not call 911, and her response was, she was just smoking pot, Lindsay. Lindsay's making accusations. She wants answers, so she's mad because she wasn't a part of it either. Melissa was looking at a eight-foot-long map on her wall with areas marked off where law enforcement had already searched. And when she looked at me, she said, Lindsay, they're going in the wrong direction. How does she know what way they should be going unless she knows where Carly is? I've had suspicion that my daughter is in the middle of nowhere. Maybe they're just holding her out there. I think what triggered Melissa's emotional distress over all this is when I called her out on social media and I said, why don't you tell your audience about the eight minute audio that you recorded of my daughter? It is very unsettling knowing that they refused to call for help when she asked them to. I believe there's evil in Zach and Melissa's house. I just need my little girl home. And I need to know she's okay and she's not being hurt. Okay, before I let you go in to be completely fair and balanced, is there anything you want to say in response to what she said? It's not worth the time. It's, it's a lie. It's not worth it's, my time. <laughs> It's just a complete lie. We've raised Carly uh, since she was like five. Um, her well, older I... brother since she was like, since he was like nine. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's I... just appalling. How dare you? Because I'm her stepmom? Because I didn't give birth to her? I don't even know how she's even going off on this tandem to even think that when we've given them everything and the FBI has been in, I mean, in our house, the sheriffs, we've had hundreds and hundreds of people come right into our home and help us and we're all trying to work together and she's the only one not. All right, I'm gonna excuse y'all, let her come out and now, just so you know, throughout, behind us, we've, we've had, you said you want your daughter's picture up, we've had it up. Thank you. I appreciate Time that. and time and time again and the poster up of where, uh, posted as, as missing and on the bottom of the screen when the stairs are numbers for people to call if they have information, give information, the whole thing. So, I mean, people look at these pictures, you know, here's the, uh, here's the poster for the Mono County Sheriff and we've got the numbers across the bottom of the screen where to call Thank and we're going to continue you. to do that and continue to do it and it'll be on She's so uh, beautiful. DrPhil.com. It'll be on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere, every platform we have. This will be all over it. So I'm going to excuse you all now. I'll talk to you again in a little bit. Uh, but I'll let you guys go, and I'll bring Lindsay out. Carly said, can you call 911? And Melissa said, no. And she goes, well, why not? And she goes, there's nothing wrong. What upsets me the most is that my ex-wife has accused us of murdering Carly and getting rid of the body. My ex-wife, Lindsay, said, could Melissa have smothered Carly? The thing that hurt me the most is when Carly's mom asked Zach if I would ever hurt Carly, and I would smother her with a pillow. Are you kidding me that I would hurt her? How dare you? Well, Lindsay, I'm glad to meet you. I'm very sorry for the occasion. Thank you. Um, I absolutely hate this. Um, one thing you won't hear me say while we're talking is I know how you feel. Because I don't know how you feel. I don't I, know how I feel. I, 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 just, I can't even begin to imagine uh, what you must be going through at this point. How did you learn that she 
had gone missing. How did, how did you get that information? I received a phone call at 9.35 a.m. from Zach, mm -hmm. and uh, his response was, Lindsay, Carly's gone. My heart sunk. Mm -hmm. I was, what do you mean she's gone? What led up to this? What, where was she? You know, who was she with? Question after question. And his response was, I don't know, she's just gone. She went to a party, you know, with some friends, and Melissa went and picked her up. And from there, we got her home, tried to settle her down. And after that, she, you know, up and down through the night. Those were the stories I got. Uh -huh. And are, are you paraphrasing, or was that exactly what he said when you picked up the phone? When I picked up the phone? Yeah, when, you, when he called you, and did he, was that exactly we what he said? We had a couple different phone calls um, within but when he like said, Did he say, she's gone? He said she was gone, yes. Those the were the words gone. that he used. And it stuck out like just a sore thumb. Huh. Gone. Gone. Mm -hmm. And at that point, did, what did you think gone meant? Dead. I mean, that's a big word. Mm -hmm. Gone is, you know, you can't mess with gone. It's either they're gone for good or they're, you know, it just didn't sit right. He didn't right. say she's missing. He said she's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why do you believe that Zach and Melissa aren't telling the full truth here? Because he was intoxicated to start with. He let us know when we arrived nine hours after Carly went missing um, that she, he had been drinking the night before. And he told us in the beginning that he was kind of in and out of sleeping. So mm -hmm. he, he wasn't awake according to my story that I received from him. Mm -hmm. But being, and listen, I'm not trying to excuse anything. I, I don't. I don't drink at all. I haven't had a drink in, since high school, but I just don't drink. But um, being drunk on a Friday night and being involved in the disappearance of your daughter are two vastly different things. So the fact that he may have been drinking or even falling down, staggering drunk, which nobody has said he was, but I even that was the case. Mm -hmm. That's a long way from being involved in the disappearance of your daughter. Right. So how do those two connect up? I mean, what, what makes you think they have something either to do with the disappearance or know more about the disappearance than they do? I think that the audio that I heard about was really bizarre. Uh -huh. And I asked them, I said, what is this audio about? And I didn't want to hear the audio for the first, you know, few minutes after getting there and Melissa saying, you know, I have this audio. And I said, what audio? And she said, well, I audioed Carly of her behavior. And I said, well, why did you do that? And she said, well, I wanted to show her how she was acting the next morning. And I said, okay, so, so audio her? I didn't understand that. So that was kind of another red flag. And did you hear the audio? I heard part of it. Okay, and, and in the part of it you heard, was there anything significant that stuck out to you? Uh, she had asked them to call 911. Okay, she asked them to call 911. The specific details in the audio were she had cried out to Melissa. She called out for my name, actually, and she said, Mom. And Melissa goes, I'm Melissa, silly. And she goes, I'm sorry. I'm just really, really scared. <laughs> And I, I, at that point, I, I figured, you know, what is she scared of? Because what is so scary that this little girl's asking to call 911 and you're telling him no? And so when Carly said, can you call 911, Melissa said, yes. There was a part where she said yes. And then there was a distant pause. And Carly said, are you going to call 911? And Melissa said, no. And she goes, well, why not? And she goes, there's nothing wrong. Well, I, I asked, you heard me ask Melissa about that. And that's not what she said. Mm -hmm. She said she didn't ask her to call 911. She said she asked, if something happened to me, would you call 911? And she said, yes, I would. Right. Are you saying that's not what was on that no. tape? No. Because I haven't heard the tape. I mean, I, 
we asked for the tape, but we didn't get it. But you, you're saying that's not what was on the tape, and you heard that. Yeah. When you hear your daughter's gone, you have no idea where, who took her, who's responsible. What do you think has happened? Michael Boone is Lindsay's private investigator, uh, and he's joining us now uh, as well. He was hired by Lindsay just five days into Carly's disappearance. And Michael actually heard the eight minute audio tape of Melissa talking to Carly. Um, can you tell us, Michael, what you heard? Well, I heard her asking her to call 911. Um, I heard her talking about the devil salad you can hear that on a, a brief portion of the audio. There's actually two audios. There's an initial audio, and then there's an audio when they're watching Cool Runnings. And you can hear in the audio um, confirming what Melissa is saying about, you know, I love you and, all, and those statements. Mm -hmm. But you also hear Carly doing what's called chirping. Hello, 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 which is not marijuana. And you can hear Cool Runnings in the background the movie, and you can hear them going into the credits. So the only timeline that I can work from, based on all the stories that have been told, and all the audios, and all the YouTube videos, is I'm looking at when that show got off at 10.30. Between 10.30 and 5.30 in the morning is the timeline I'm working from. But she did ask to call 911. Okay, so I, what I'm asking, um, did, there's two different versions here of the characterization, if something happens to me, would you call 911 versus her pleading for her to call 911? Is it one or the other? Lindsay's story is more consistent. She's actually asking to be called 911. And can you tell from the context of the tape why she was asking to call 911. Did she feel like she was in distress at the moment? In the totality, yeah. I think she was stressed, she was confused, she was scared. She probably knew something was happening to her, which normally doesn't happen to her when she smokes simple marijuana. Right. So you can tell the stress in the voice. And we know that no 911 call was made. Correct. They just accused you of not even helping with the search. They said that whenever uh, you were there that you left after five days and that when it, people went out to put boots on the ground and do the search and scour the area and look that you just stayed at the house and that you didn't even help. What do you say about that? It's true because I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I literally could not move. When you hear your daughter's gone, you have no idea where who took her, who's responsible, you know. I was in knots, my stomach, I was, you know, actually sick, very, very sick, and I couldn't move. I was literally paralyzed. Has there been any reliable tip or information that has given any direction as to where she was seen after the house that day, anything at all? Absolutely nothing. So, as far as any sightings, she's not been seen, just disappeared off the face of the earth. There was a, supposed to be like three sightings is what we hear. Right. First one was a neighbor that was inside a, you right. know, enclosed glass room with a hot tub. So how reliable is the vision there? Right. Secondly was uh, another neighbor that was a teacher at a school that possibly called Melissa's cell phone and right. let her know the tip. And right. then a third was a wooder. Now the wooder I have suspicion on. Right. And that was at Highway 6? Yes. Okay. And those three we, we talked about. But other than that immediate area and that immediate time, there's been nothing. Right. Okay. What do you think has happened? I wish I knew. I really do. I. What I think happened is that I believe, and I really don't want to believe this, but I believe my daughter had a freaking drug overdose. <laughs> and I believe it because she was asking for help. She was 
asking for them to call. And I believe it. a very early morning, Melissa saw her with her eyes open, and I think that's when my daughter passed. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if that's what happened. I'm not pointing fingers, and I've never speculated. So I just well, you actually are pointing fingers. You're saying that you believe they know more than than they're saying. A belief. Oh, that's my belief. I've never joined in a campaign on Facebook. I've never done any of that. I've literally sat back and watched it all unfold. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Next, where is Carly Gousset? Was she hurt, disoriented, depressed in the morning of October 13th, 2018, when she was last seen? Are there more clues to her disappearance, or did she really leave without a trace? It's very difficult in this electronic age to totally go off the grid. There are cameras everywhere. This is an electronic world. It's hard to go off the grid. Has that happened? We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... Sixteen-year-old Carly Gousset's stepmother, Melissa, says she last saw her stepdaughter alive on October 13, 2018, at 5.48 a.m. in their home in rural Northern California. So your theory is if Melissa woke up and, and Carly had passed from an overdose during the night, um, you're saying that she might have feared that she would be in trouble some way or liable in some way for not heeding her request to call 911 earlier. And so instead of then calling the authorities that she or they disappeared the body so as not to be held the, accountable? I mean, is that what you're... The actions that took place that morning after Carly went missing are very questionable. She took her little boys and woke them up at 5.30 on a Saturday morning, like no big deal, and, you know, let's, oh, good morning, 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday, and took them to her brothers. Now, why did she take them to her brothers? Well, you know, she said she didn't, she, she corrected what she said she told um, the interview that she had given earlier. She said that wasn't true. If you're being so careful to not damage the investigation, why you would put out misinformation, I don't know. But nonetheless, she said she corrected that. Whatever the decision was, she said she want, corrected that record within 20 minutes, but they said the edit's out, it's gone, it's done. But do you know, did she get her boys up at 5.30 and take them to her brother's house? Yes, she did. So you know that? She told us. If she discovered Carly was missing um, at 7.15 mm -hmm. or whatever when she wakes up or whatever, wouldn't taking the other children somewhere else if there's a crisis and you're going to have to start looking for a missing child wouldn't getting them adult supervision away from all the drama be a responsible thing to do? Yes, indeed, definitely. But to, you know, I mean, if she's just out on a walk or missing, I mean, they obviously felt that there was more to the steps of why she's gone. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. When did she take the, the boys to somewhere else? I I'm mean, sure. that's, I mean, you'd yeah. want to know yeah. that. I mean, all of that is important as to where all of this happens. Is it possible that it happened just exactly as they're saying, that she sat up with her through the night, drifted off to sleep, woke up, and she was gone, and poof, she's gone. She walked out to the highway. Somebody picked her up, and she's gone? Of course anything's possible. I just don't believe it. And tell me why you don't believe it. Too many stories. 
can't keep their lines straight, can't keep their stories straight, timelines. It's one story was 6.30, one was 6.45, seven, now it's 7.15. Zach's timeline was saying, well, let me look at my cell phone and see what time Melissa called me um, that morning that Carly went missing. Well, that was 7.30. The original story was that Melissa went out looking for Carly prior to waking Zach up. And now Zach's calling Melissa at 7.30, but I thought it was 7.15 that she discovered that she was waking up and now Carly's missing. And why is she calling Zach if she's not at home? Or if she's at home, I should say. Mm -hmm. It's just very weird. What's your theory about this, Michael? Well, I have a reliable informant who works for the county who said that she was by there at 7.30. She goes by there every day to work, and there was nobody out at that intersection at 7.30. She's a county employee. She reached out to me. She obviously doesn't want to get fired. But, you know, this thing has been, I'm sorry to say it, has been a circus. The Mono County Sheriff's Department has not taken ownership of this case and keeps wanting to believe that it's nothing but a runaway. And there's plenty of probable cause, you know, based on my experience, and I was a homicide detective for quite a while, that, you know, she should be listed as endangered, not runaway. Zach deserves, Lindsay deserves, Melissa deserves for this case to be properly investigated. Exactly. All three of these people have an investment in this child. Now, Melissa and, and Zach are adamant that they do not want to be in the same room as Lindsay, so I'm going to ask Lindsay to step backstage while I invite Melissa and Zach back. Uh, I understand that Melissa will now let me listen to the eight minutes of audio of Carly. She's gone to her dressing room to get it. Uh, we'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... This key was given to me by a very dear friend. She got it for me when Carly went missing. It's a paid forward key. This is my key to help bring Carly home. People have said it's the key to where she is. The key to the treasure chest where Carly's hiding. Well, we're here today to keep a bright light on a very important case because a young girl, Carly Gousset, is missing. Uh, now, I had asked to hear the last recording of Carly, and Melissa says that she certainly will allow me to hear it, doesn't want to play it for the audience, and that's, I, I, I totally get that, uh, I but I am going to listen to it and get a sense of, of what was going on with this young girl at the time. So, uh, just very low tech, I've got some earphones here. <laughs> and. And uh, you, you can plug them in, and I'm going to listen to this and see if we can find out. Because I'm sick of people lying. Turned up a little bit. Turn this up all the way. Well, you're certainly being very calming and supportive of her during this time. It is calming her down. There's no question about that. Um, that's very, very telling, very informative. Um, a couple of things. Uh, number one, she's very, very apologetic. Uh, she keeps saying that she's, she's, she keeps saying that she's very sorry. She probably said that a hundred times, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't think she's apologizing for what she did. I think she's apologizing for some imagined um, wrong. I thought you did a really uh, good and responsible job of, of calming her down uh, and not enabling her, but kind of keeping her, you know, no, don't, that's ridiculous, don't say that. Tell yourself this. Uh, do that. With regard to 911, she said, Would you call 911? 
And you said, what do you mean? And she said, if I was dying or going to die. And you said, you're not dying. She said, if I was, would you call 911? And you said, of course I would call 911. And, but you're not. And she said, but if something was happening, would you call 911? You said, of course I would. Uh, so that's very clear. She was not asking you to call 911. She was saying, if something happened to me or was happening to me in a life threatening way, would you call 911? And you said, of course I would. Uh, so it's. That exchange happened exactly the way you said it did, almost verbatim. She mentioned the devil's lettuce, and uh, it was very clear when she mentioned the devil's lettuce that she was being delusional at that point. That wasn't just kind of a random thought like, lettuce is bad for you. That was a delusional thought that she was having. So this was not... Uh, marijuana. Uh, this was some type of hallucinogenic and it might well have been some type of LSD, uh, the neurotransmitters in her brain had disrupted her limbic system and had disrupted her neocortex. She was very disorganized in her thinking. So this was something that altered her neurologically, not just biochemically, but neurologically. We'll be right back. Today, the story of one missing girl who suddenly vanished, 16-year-old Carly Gousset, is still missing after four months of searching by her family, law enforcement, private investigators, search parties, helicopters, dogs, I mean everything. Carly's family still holds out the hope that she will return safely, but since October 13, 2018, the days without Carly have just felt longer and longer and longer. Now, I've just listened to a tape that Melissa made of Carly the night that she came home. Um, I'm, for one, am very glad that you made that recording uh, because it's full of information and data. What it tells me is, um, as I said, it, this was a mind-altering drug. Somebody had laced that marijuana or that wasn't just a meth head talking. There was more to it than that. Um, and it would be interesting to know where that came from. And it, because of her degree of paranoia, it makes perfect sense to me um, that she would flee, that she would wake up and flee. And if she flees and gets to a highway and gets picked up, um, as much as you hate to think about it or say it, um, there aren't a bunch of Boy Scouts necessarily on that highway, uh, which is good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news is she might well have been picked up, and the good news is they're not usually picked up to be killed. Uh, You're which up means to be sold. it could be picked up and forced into the sex trade or something that, Dad, I know you don't want to think about, but it could mean that she's alive. Yeah. And I, I, it pains me to say that to you, but at the same time, oh, it I means she could be alive. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, and it could explain her being 100% off the grid because their identity is, is taken away. Um, and um, I, I don't know if, if y'all want to respond to any of the things that, that Lindsay said. Um, I would really encourage you guys to do whatever it takes to understand that you're all under a lot of pressure. And y y when we're under pressure and we're under pain, we say things and do things that 
are not our normal personalities and we hurt one another's feelings and we have to have forgiveness in our heart and say I'm, this situation needs a hero and somebody needs to step up here and say I'm going to be the hero here and I'm going to put all of this aside and I'm going to rally here and come together and make sure we're not leaving one stone unturned. We're going to all be pushing this rock up the hill together and not be divided. Um, because I, I listen very carefully to her and I, I don't hear her calling y'all murderers. I hear her saying I just there's so many questions in my mind and there seem to be so many inconsistencies and I don't know how to resolve them when everybody that loves this girl comes together and you start exchanging information, you don't know what you don't know. I mean, sometimes you might say something that connects with somebody else that connects with somebody else. I've been doing this a long time and sometimes things that you think are insignificant will mean something to somebody else, something that was said that could tell you something that could lead to something. And you have absolutely nothing to lose by, you have one thing in common and is that you all love Carly. And that should be enough to say, I'm gonna put my agenda aside and make her the number one goal here. So uh, we'll take a break. Can these families come together and unite to find answers for their daughter's disappearance? I hope that's going to be a goal when they leave here. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... I want to put up on all the screens, just wrap us here as much as you can uh, so we can see uh, this beautiful young girl here, Carly Gousset, and you see the numbers on the screen all around. And everybody take a look. Look at her eyes, look at her hair, and really take a look. And if you have any information whatsoever on Carly Gousset, please call the Mono County Sheriff's Department at 760-932-7549. And just pick option number seven. Now, no tip is too small here. You can also go to drphil.com if you didn't have your pen handy, or you don't have it as you're looking at the screen, because it's going to be on drphil.com. The number's going to be there. It's going to be on my Facebook. It's going to be on my Instagram. It's going to be on uh, my Twitter account. It's going to be everywhere that you can find me. You're going to find the information to provide a tip here and look don't waste anybody's time entertain yourself some other way but if you've got information about this somebody has interacted with somebody set across from somebody's seen maybe her in the back seat of a car somewhere somehow if she's out there somebody has seen her somebody has interacted in some way pick up the phone and give that information so we can bring this young girl home. And, you know, we've done that here, and we want to do it again. And I, I hope that these three people will choose, not in some drama-filled way, but just choose to sit down and say, let's just open up the lines of communication and be sure we're not leaving some stone unturned. I would hate for that to be the reason that this child is not found. Um, I, I do want to thank my guest today, Zach. Thank you for being here. Thank Melissa, you. thank you for thank being you. here. A special thanks to Lindsay's private investigator, Michael Boone. Thank you, Michael, and thank you for continuing to push on all of this. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, don't forget you can subscribe to my podcast, uh, Fill in the Blanks. We talk about this kind of story and others. And again, look for all of this on our social platforms because the numbers will be there if you didn't write them down now. Let's find this girl and bring her home. We'll see you next time.